moves for tomorrow. A lot of stocks that we got to go over, all types of sectors, gold, oil, AI sector, Bitcoin, crypto stocks as well. Also, you see how NVIDIA is right at that big resistance level. It couldn't break it on Friday, but we're going to see if it breaks tomorrow. And if it does, that might produce a bigger move to the higher side. Also, Palantir is moving. That might be setting up for a bigger buy as well because it's starting to slowly turn back over and have some retracements, which is when I usually like to get in stuff. So smash the like button, subscribe if you are new. We're going to get straight into it. Make sure y'all get this video over 100 likes within three hours, 200 likes within eight hours. Okay, let's see if we can do that. No, y'all can't. Just rip up the like button. Comment any other stocks you guys want me to go over tomorrow as fast as possible so I have time to put it in tomorrow's video. Okay, but let's get straight into it. NVIDIA stock, NVDA. We have the support at 133.35 and a resistance level at 134.50. So what do we need for tomorrow? We need this resistance level to break on the upside, right? So you need NVIDIA stock to break this resistance level, even open above it on pre-market or something and leave it. You don't want it to come back down and test that resistance level. You want it to actually leave. That's going to be very bullish on NVIDIA stock, and we might see some large movements on NVIDIA stock. We're also going to go with the news that we have tomorrow that might produce bigger moves or it could even stall out some stocks as well. But that's the biggest thing you need on NVIDIA stock tomorrow. And um, y'all see how it moved on Friday? It ripped up and it came back down. Tested resistance that support, but it came right back down to it in the aftermarket and, and it went below it. So it tested that resistance level again. Resistance level didn't want price to go up. That's what we don't want, right? You want price to break that resistance level and leave that price level. That's optimal. So tomorrow I am looking for some nice scalp calls for NVIDIA to get up to around the 136 areas, especially if that resistance level breaks, right? That's a possible play I'm looking out for. That's why it says buy on Monday. That's something I'm looking to buy Monday. Any long-term heavy shares, we're already up. We have shares around 110 on NVIDIA stock. We bought in here. So we're already up about 22% on our NVIDIA shares so far, and I'm looking for that to go to all-time highs right now. So I'm not looking to buy any more new big shares. We bought that down here, right? We bought what it mattered. Now when it's going up, we're enjoying our profits. So I'm looking to scalp NVIDIA tomorrow, but that resistance level really has to break tomorrow. And these are the two levels you want to watch. It's a very tight range on NVIDIA stock, right? So it'll be kind of easier to know where NVIDIA might want to go. If 133.35 breaks on the downside, then I'm looking for downside on the video tomorrow. But if the resistance level breaks on the upside, then I'm looking for upside, right? It makes it real simple. That's why um, I hope these levels really help y'all. So that's why I'm looking at NVIDIA stock. When do I want to buy more? I'm going to look to scalp it. And then I might even look to get swing calls tomorrow on NVIDIA stock as well. No more shares. We already got shares down here. We're pretty much chilling on that, okay? So that's what I'm looking out for on nvidia stock amd hit my support level pretty much perfect right around 160 to 20 held off that we'll see if we get some push off of amd stock um on the upper side amd just doesn't interest me in this area the only time i really look to play amd one we're getting close to earnings right uh, they have earnings on the 29th actually when is nvidia earnings oh nvidia is not till november so we got time for that um but if amd breaks 182.10 then I'm looking to play AMD to the upside. This is a big resistance level. So if we break that, that's showing signs that AMD actually wants to turn bullish and it wants to start booming back up to the higher side. I'm still bearish on AMD right now, okay? So watch that 182.10 and the range in here. I'm really not interested in playing AMD in that range, right? AVGL broke that resistance level. It did go to all-time highs. You finally had that one pull down. So tomorrow, you really want to know after this pull down, does it start retracing higher or does it start going back down? We don't have that yet. So we do have to wait. I'm not going to put any lows on here. I want to see how it moves tomorrow for AVGL to be that next play. The play already happened, right? It broke resistance level. It went to all-time highs. That is the play. So now we have to have give it a little time to form the next one. You can't rush into it. Retail tries to rush into stuff. Monsters, which I hope we all are watching the video, we have to give time for the plays to form. That's why we have very high optimal plays is we let the play form. So let AVGO kind of move tomorrow. Then I can better update y'all tomorrow on AVGO, depending on how it moves. Um, I was thinking about getting more Intel shares. I don't think I am. We have Intel shares right around $21. So we're up about 10% right now. I am looking for Intel to continue pushing up in the 25 to 26 range. It got close to it. So we sold about 60% of the shares, but we still have 40% left. And I'm still looking for Intel to go in that range. Okay. Intel support is about 22.20. So I'm really not looking to buy any more new Intel. I was thinking about it, but I'm just not. And we'll see how it moves. If it comes back down and breaks the support, this might be the last high it makes. And then it might continue going down. And I'll probably sell the rest of the shares 
if we come back down and break that 2220 area okay i'll sell the rest of the shares it'll be up like five percent or so but i'll just cut it because that might signal a bigger pull down on intel and it might be done but as long as we don't break the support and we continue going higher i'll hold the shares that i have to reach up into about 25 to 26 which is my target for now on intel so that's how i'm looking at not looking to buy any more new ones or anything like that just kind of holding the shares that we already got Make sure you guys join the team. First in the description, we do play a lot of stuff. Um, you can even see some of the NVIDIA buys. We did call options on Monday. We sold all that for 20% gains. We did Procter & Gamble puts, 9% gains. We did Microsoft puts, 10% gains. We scalp a lot. I think I scalped like 13 times last week, over 100% gains total and everything. Make sure you guys join the team for the prices go up, right? We have elite, elite year, lifetime memberships all available. Lifetime also comes with personal training. Prices do go up in about 24 hours. Email me if you have any questions. Will now let's Gmail.com and also personal training is available as well. Okay, now let's go to SMCI. SMCI is still stalled. Okay, it has not moved ever since this run up and then it dropped and it's just been stalled in the same price. If you can zoom out, look at the 15 minute chart. You see how this is just stalled? So it doesn't sense high hope that any move is going to come. I'm hoping tomorrow really solidifies that move if it wants to start going back up or if it wants to start going back down so i'm looking for tomorrow to confirm pretty much a lot of things we're looking for it to confirm nvidia stock we're looking for it to confirm smci we're also going to go over tesla that i'm gonna go over we're looking for that to confirm we're looking for palantir to confirm as well that we're going to go over um but yeah smci is still at the same levels 45 10 support 53 40 as resistance and we're looking for a move out of this range that will better help our clear of direction right right now we don't have that so we can't just play something without direction because you're nine times out of ten you're probably going to lose on that play because you might be on the wrong side so let S smci start moving and then i possibly do want to play it to the upside about 58 dollars as long as we hold this support so that's pretty much all i'm waiting out for right now SSCI, we just need movement to confirm that it wants to go up. Okay, Dell did break resistance. Dell is pushing up. I am thinking about playing some shares on Dell pretty much on the next pull down. So I'm just kind of waiting for a pull down on Dell and then at a support. And then I'm looking to get shares for Dell to push up maybe to the, the high 130s, the 140s. But every week we are getting closer and closer to elections as well. So it is getting a little more higher risk to play stuff. So make sure you really join the team. You can be on our private live streams that we have every morning. Because you really got to be nimble in this market. But um, yeah, that's what I'm looking at for Dale. Looking for some pull down. Let's go to Palantir stock. So what I meant by Palantir stock is, you see how it's starting to get softer on that upside, right? It's getting a little bit harder for Palantir to start going, to continue going up. You see how it boomed up? We're getting a little slower in this range which might mean we want to pull down which will set up a nice buy on palantir so that's what i am waiting out for right remember i told y'all palantir is going to 45 dollars. it is literally doing that but i haven't bought any right here in this range i want the pull down i want some of those red candles to start pulling us down at least below like 42 dollars. so i'm gonna put like a green level here and that's what i'm looking to get some palantir stock below 42 so we'll see if tomorrow can give us that if it just goes up hits 45 i'll just let it go there's no point no point of chasing stuff or rushing stuff right we're consistent every week so that helps us not play just stuff that's just moving of free price movements so that's what i'm looking at for pounds here looking for some downward movement the retracement because that's when i'll get in right you see how it pushed up here and it gave you that retracement that's where you get in and you catch the secondary move so that's what i'm looking out for but support is still 39.45 it's a little far from it you also have a smaller support like around forty two dollars thirty five so you, if you want to watch that it's forty two thirty five that's a smaller support area i'll just write it out so if you want to mark it on your chart anything analyst company coming very soon um hint hint but yeah that's palantir okay um apple stock i'm looking for put options on apple stock so what i'm looking out for is uh, kind of what I'm looking out for uh, is scalp put options. So I'm either looking for a down movement to go down or I'm looking for it to go up and reverse. Getting puts here, getting puts there, going to the downside. So that is something I'm looking to play tomorrow on Apple, aka what Y says by Monday. Not just only shares. We're looking for scalps as well. And I'm looking to scalp Apple to the downside at least to around below 27, below 227. So looking for Apple to go below 227. And that's what I'm looking to play puts on. So that's what I'm looking out for tomorrow. But everything has to confirm and everything. We'll see it live. But that those are put options that I'm looking out for 
tomorrow. So they still have support at 223.15 and resistance at 231.60. This is the bigger range that Apple needs to break out of to really give us direction because it just hasn't done that, okay, in like a while. So you really need this to break. That's when the bigger plays will come on Apple, right? 233, I mean, 223.15 and 231.60, those are your resistance levels and support levels. But for now, I'm playing just shorter term things. I'm looking for puts tomorrow for Apple to break uh, 227. So that's also something I'm looking to play. Meta stock is pretty much in the gutter. Uh, there's nothing I would do with Meta stock, if I'm being honest. I wouldn't even touch it right now. It just doesn't intrigue me. Google stock as well doesn't intrigue me. They're about to have earnings in a week as well. Next week uh, on the 22nd on Tuesday, they're going to have earnings. So probably just wait for those earnings to come out. And then Amazon, not much I want to do at Amazon in this range either. They're about to have earnings as well. So we'll let Amazon kind of move. But depending on Amazon, how it moves tomorrow, there might be a bigger play on Amazon that might be brewing. So that is something I am watching. Tesla. Yeah, I remember Tesla at that big, it's pretty much by the rumor sell the news type of event of RoboTaxi. They also have earnings next week as well on October 23rd. We are getting to earnings seasons. I think the biggest earnings this week is actually on Netflix this week okay so be mindful of that netflix is a very big company right i think like they're one of the first ones that are going to have big earnings which is on thursday so they could also move disney as well depending on their subscription numbers so watch that if netflix starts dropping on thursday after the earnings you'll probably see disney drop as well and disney nike and those stocks i'm looking to buy a lot of while they're still at low prices okay but um let me go back to what's stock are we on Tesla. So Tesla had that big drop of the Robert Taxi event. I think they produced out the bigger van, some other cars. Uh, Elon Musk pulled up in one. They also had the Optimus robots and everything like that, right? So buy the rumor, sell the news. That's how it is, right? I mean, buy the news, sell the rumor, or buy the sale, buy. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It had a big drop, okay? Now, the biggest thing on Tesla right now is take support off, okay? Which there is a support. We're just going to take it off for now. Because the biggest thing is how does Tesla move? after the drop does it start retracing higher does it continue dropping or does it stall out that is what you want to know hopefully tomorrow we get a directional move not a stall out we need a directional move because then that'll let us know where tesla might want to go for the next weeks very very crucial but they also have earnings next week in about seven eight days well probably like eight nine days so we got to be very careful on tesla right now right any shorter term plays i don't want to do on tesla any longer term plays, if Tesla breaks a very key area, it's like around like 207, I might sell a little bit of my long term shares on Tesla because Tesla might want to go back below to the 170s and 180s. And I'd rather not have that big position in that drop, right? That means it's going to drop maybe another 20%. Right now, our shares are up 20%. So I'll kind of see how I want to do that with Tesla right now. But let's see how tesla moves tomorrow off this big drop you need some type of direction retracement continue or something to really give us that direction right now on tesla stock so just be mindful of that um amc is in the gutter not much to do on amc because i know some of y'all are watching it gamestop is in the gutter as well it would have to break 2375 for me to be interested in it it hasn't done that so there's nothing i can do on it djt finally had his red candle at the resistance at 26 dollars. that is good i am looking for the pull down okay and off that pull down that's when i'm looking to play it remember i told y'all djt is going to get very interesting the closer and closer it gets to elections and you see djt do nothing but go up right now okay so very powerful so we'll see what djt i do i do need more pull down for now support is still around twenty dollars 75 cents so as long as we don't break that i'm looking to continue to play djt to the upper side i think it even get past thirty dollars in like the 30s 32 33 and that type of range especially if it continues a movement so that's what i'm kind of looking out for on djt right now also any stocks i didn't add in the video let me know make sure you guys smash the like button subscribe if you're new get over 100 likes in three hours uh 200 likes within eight hours i know y'all can do it make sure y'all join the team first in the description um gold gold is still bullish like i told y'all it's slowly creeping up right we have support at 1920 still looking for gold to go up to about 22 dollars. i am looking to play it you just haven't had a strong movement out of here just yet okay so i am still looking for a bigger movement but it is the same levels and also gld you see this one booming up once it broke 245 i was thinking about getting call options so i'll see if i want that for tomorrow depending on how the strength looks tomorrow on gold okay so that's it for gold 
gold still bullish. I believe gold is still going to go up unless it breaks that key uh, support level. OXY for oil. Oil is still bearish in my eyes. We had, did have a retracement. Now we're having that retracement back up after this big down movement. We need that support to break 50 through 75. Then I'll start looking for downward plays. If we don't break that support, we just might still want to retrace higher. Then if it breaks 57.10, uh, OX might, might want to turn shorter term bullish. Right now it's a bearish, but it might want to turn shorter term bullish. So what I'm really waiting out for is the resistance level to break or the short the shorter term support level to break. Then I'll kind of give us a better sense of direction how I can really play it um, for oil right now. Okay. Bitcoin. Bitcoin stalled. Y'all know me. Bitcoin's bearish in my eyes. I'm expecting lower prices. You do have your shorter term level, 65,475 of resistance, which hit here and it fell back down. And then you have 58,630 support it almost hit perfect there and it went back up so bitcoin stalled bitcoin gets, gets interesting once it breaks seventy two thousand one hundred. that's when the crypto market is going to be all hands on deck okay we're going to be in all the cryptos even the crypto stocks i think they're going to be booming i think once it breaks here that's going to take bitcoin up to the ninety thousands a hundred thousands but that has to break that's i've been waiting for this level for months okay four months and also ethereum i believe once the next crypto cycle come you'll see ethereum uh, past 4,000. Okay. So very big gains. We're already building the positions on these slowly. I haven't bought in a while, like in some months, but Ethereum is going to do over 65% and not, that's not even all time high. So it's going to be very juicy and lucrative in the crypto market, especially once that 72,100 uh, breaks, but I'm building the positions now. So whenever it does break, I'm not chasing the next move. We're taking profits in that move. Okay. Very crucial. And that also brings me to Coinbase. Coinbase is the one I'm doing. They're experiencing some upper movement because Bitcoin had a little upper movement, right? The more Bitcoin goes up, the more money Coinbase company makes, the more fees they get, and the more they're, they're better their earnings do. AKA, look at their earnings. They beat it by 4,000%, 282%. But guess what? Bitcoin is going down. Now they missed by 85%, AKA, their stock is dropping. So I think the next crypto cycle, you'll see Coinbase up past $200. So I'm building that position in now. So whenever it gets there, we're chilling. We're enjoying the profits. They also have earnings on October 30th. So watch out that uh, for Coinbase. MSTR is already at all time highs. I, I wasn't really ever interested in playing on MSTR. It did pull down right here. That was a decent buy. But honestly, I'm just letting MSTR go for now. It's just too high for my liking. I'd rather have something that is painful right now, like Coinbase. It just presents more gains to me. So MSTR is up. I'm just letting it go. Maybe on the next pull down, we'll kind of see. Also, hood stock is up too high. Um, hood stock is actually moving pretty decent. I am thinking about a bigger swing play on hood stock for shares. I'm just not ready yet. Maybe on the next pull down, I'll kind of see. I'm more focused on Coinbase right now. So maybe that next pull down, we'll kind of see what Coinbase, I mean, hood stock might want to do. But for now, I'm going to just let it move and just focus on Coinbase, right? You don't have to play every stock to be profitable in the market okay that's a very very big thing um so yeah that's hood the solar energy type sectors i really just kind of look at in phase in phase is just pulling down so i'm not ready yet they also have earnings next week in like october 22nd like i said earnings season is about to kick in um so yeah nothing really going on with that i'm pretty much just waiting on it being patient on it paypal pretty little stalled i'm i'm thinking about buying more shares of paypal this week we did buy two weeks ago um, really hasn't moved from that. So I kind of been patient on it, but I think PayPal can easily get back up to the 140s, even back up to the 180s to 200. And that's over 150% gains just on shares. So, but I do believe PayPal needs to get more overseas. They're highly, highly, highly in just like the North America type of sectors. They need to go overseas. I think they would do way better once they do that, but it's just kind of other platforms bigger and overseas. But I think if they do that, they'll do way better. Also, they have Venmo as well. So they're Venmo and PayPal, not just PayPal. But yeah, so kind of watch out for that longer shares. Some stocks I want to buy more of Nike, of course, y'all know that Disney, of course, y'all know that also the bonds, they're still dropping. So I'm in no rush to play them. The yields are still going up. So I'm being patient. I'm just letting them drop. I was going to buy more here, but they just been dropping ever since. So I can be patient. I can wait. These are bigger plays of 2025 that I'm building in now. And like I said, I'm looking for TLT to kind of go in this range and we're almost there. So it's still dropping, waiting to buy more bonds. Of course, TMF looking for it to go in this area. They're dropping. I'm still waiting. 
being patient. TMF actually has a bigger support right around like $48.80. Um, I want to watch that because if that breaks, that's just going to sense more downward side pressure. And then I could just still not buy and just wait because it's going to drop to lower prices. This thing I think is going to pay. Minimum, I think it's going to go back up to like $200. Okay. That's a very big gain off of just shares. Y'all want to see real quick? Let's do the measurements of percentages. And say it took four years. Right now, the price is around $50. That's 200. Look. 293% gains. Say it took four years, almost 300% gains. Say it took five years to get up there. That's what's 300 divided by five. That's like what? Damn, I can't do math right now. At least like 80%. So you're compounding like 80% a year when the national average is 10. You're beating the national average by eight times, which is crazy. So, so you put 100 grand, your 100 grand is making you about 80 grand a year just by holding this type of stock. So it's a bigger type of play that I'm kind of brewing on on TMF. So yeah, just kind of watch that. And I also want to do big call options on TLT, Nike, Disney, and some other ones I'll save for the team. Just make sure y'all join. Y'all get that. Okay. S&P 500, all we really have is support at 569.65. And that's pretty much it. I'm still waiting for a bigger pull down. I think the market is too high. We'll kind of see what that means. And also we do have no news tomorrow. So we got no news tomorrow. OK, tomorrow is also a bank holiday. So be careful trading tomorrow. Tr tomorrow's a 50 50 of trading because the banks are closed. You're not really getting real movement. You need the banks to be open. So be mindful of that. I'm kind of considering tomorrow like a half holiday. OK, the market will be open, but banks will be closed. So you might not be getting real movements. You also could stall out tomorrow, meaning if you look at the S&P 500 tomorrow, um, you could be doing this just stall out right at the end of the day it does nothing okay so just be prepared for that tomorrow the banks are closed we really don't have any news till i believe on wednesday let me see nope not even wednesday we have news we don't have news till thursday of core retail sales when retail sales come out so thursday is the big news but thursday is also when we have netflix earnings so thursday is going to be a big day in trading wednesday Tuesday and Monday really have no news, but just be careful tomorrow because tomorrow banks are closed. That's like your fair warning. Okay. But, um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I'll keep the video here. I know we're right around like 20 ish minutes or so. I didn't want to make it too long on the Sunday. There's still a lot of stocks that I want to go over that I didn't, but we'll go over that tomorrow. So tomorrow I'll make a longer video closer to around that 30 minute mark. So make sure I'll comment the stocks you want me to go over in that video. Thank you guys for watching. Smash the like button, subscribe if you're new. Um, Make sure you guys join the team. First in the description, we got the elite elite year. Email me with any questions. We've been killing it this week. You can see some of the plays. Nvidia 20%. We went, we went over that earlier. Tuesday we did Nvidia's about uh, 10%. We did more Nvidia's that did 30%. We did more Nvidia's that did about 10%. Which I told y'all once that resistance level breaks on Nvidia, I'm pretty much gonna turn bullish on it. And we've been playing nothing but Nvidia calls all week okay you can see some google calls there 10 percent gains meta puts 10 percent gains we've been just banging okay so make sure you guys join the team amd put we lost about six percent on that but then we did tesla puts it got about 40 percent gain on that so fairly easy profit so make sure you guys join the team and only join if you really want to change your mindset into a monster not retail not talking about patterns and indicators and our size and all that we don't do that so if you're want to be retail just don't even join okay Make your life easy. Don't join. But if you want to be a monster, you want to be consistent per week, then you join and really take it seriously. OK. Also, follow me on Instagram at will.knowledge. It's my only Instagram, by the way. I'm going to do a post um, probably around one to two hours after the video goes up. So just go like it. It'll be a random post on there, but I need to start posting more on Instagram. But always remember, no recommendation to buy or sell anything. Just for educational purposes only. So do not trade anything you see here in the video. Catch you guys in the next one.